welcome back along to my channel today. I'm uh, out on the South Downs this morning, uh, trying to get some pictures of some trees and stuff. I've got my uh, 045 again. I've got it all set up for my my first shot. It's a bit blustery, which is quite nice. Hopefully, should get some movement in these trees. Uh, for my first shot, I am doing this one in the super wide. I want to try and get nice and close to this one, and that should hopefully be wide enough to get all that in. It's been windswept over the years with all the wind you get up here. So, I think about a four, four and a half second exposure. Um, got a, a bit of a harsh sun on it this morning, so I will be going through a few different shots today showing different focal lengths. I did try it last week, but had a problem with the camera where the um, elastic was wedged between the layers and um, had a massive light leak. So, I'm going to show a few different shots today of them, different focal lengths, but this one I particularly want to get in super wide. I might step back a little bit and get a few more, but um, I'm going to have a little wander along the top today. So we can find this morning. I've got my second shot set up. I'm still the same, the same spot. Um, I've added an extra layer to the zero, so it's now shooting at 50 mil. I have come back quite a bit because I wouldn't have got it all in. Um, shooting at 50 mil, you're less likely to get the darker edges, the vignetta around the image. Um, it does add a much, much more time to the uh, exposure. Just the 25 was four and a half to five seconds. This is now about 15 seconds, so it's a much longer exposure, especially with photo pan film because the responsivity failure is pretty bad. But hopefully with the longer expo exposure, you should get a bit more motion in the tree there, a bit more cloud movement, and uh, can can make for an nicer shot. So we'll shoot this and then we'll be able to compare the two. The wind's starting to pick up and it also looks like we've got some rain coming in over the horizon so I don't really want to be caught out again. Last week was bad enough so I'm going to set this one up, get some exposure readings and uh, I'm going to try and go just a little bit further over because I know there's another nice tree over there and uh, yeah, see these come out quickly. So I've got the uh, camera at 50mm again, I've got a, a 10 second exposure on this. 
So I'm hoping it's all set up okay. I'm gonna do a few final tweaks and then, uh, then go for it. I might try the 75 mil on this as well, go back a little bit and uh, see how much difference that looks as well. That's the camera with the uh, three layers. It's now 75 mil focal, and the exposure time is now 20 seconds. So I've got this time uh, square on the side of the barn. Um, hopefully, I should still get a bit of detail left in the clouds and stuff, but I'm trying to get the, um, the balance right. But with a setup like this, there shouldn't be any vignette in whatsoever. Um, so, hopefully, it should be quite a nice. point I'm stopping off the rain is getting a lot closer now so I'm gonna get a quick couple here two different focal lengths and um, the way to see the way to work out uh, what you're gonna get in your image with a pinhole is you've got the a lot of pinholes will actually come with lines these days but your film will be from here and you've got your pinhole there so you can work out a line straight off down there and with this side exactly the same So I'm quite far back on this, but this should be enough to fill the frame nicely, hopefully get a bit of uh, what's going on around it. Uh, it'll probably be another 20 second exposure, I'll quickly meet you for that. But I'll probably more exposed for the sky this time, it's going to be a lot more sky in this image. Um, yeah, so I'll quickly get all this set up and see how it goes. So I get a lot of questions about uh, metering, and um, I normally just use an app, um, the free light meter app, which a lot of people use, which is this one, as you can see that. That's always been really reliable, but recently it's been crashing my phone, so I switched over to uh, another one, which uh, shows more of the image. And that one I'm actually really enjoying, plus you can change your f-stop to uh, pinhole size. Also, testing out this little thing, which so far seems pretty accurate. I think it gives a 45 degree view, and it's got a tiny little display on the back, which you may not be able to see. It's not the best in light, honestly, but um, it was only cheap, and it seems to work quite well. It's got a little uh, hot shoe let, um, attachment, but just point it. 
around and it uh, gives me a uh, meter reading as I go. So that's pretty good. It's pretty good that one. I quite like that one. Um, there's another backup if the app or my phone fails again. But so I've actually got a 10 second exposure on this. Um, I've exposed a bit more for the sky. Um, so it's not too bad. And let's see how it goes. So for my last shot, um, switch from the 75 to 25 mil. So this is ridiculously wide now. I'm going to stay where I am. I'm just going to move the uh, Z plate forward a little bit so I don't get the tripod links in the image. So this has now gone from a 10 second exposure to a two second exposure. I wouldn't normally sit this far away with a wide angle, but to demonstrate the difference between the 75 and the 25, uh, so it should be quite a difference. I'm just waiting for the sun to get tucked behind the clouds again, and then I'll, uh, then I'll get it. And I'm gonna start to feel the rain now. I'm quickly rushing back to the car. Hopefully all the photos have come out. You can find out later on when I develop them. Uh, we appreciate it if you subscribe. Uh, check out some of my other videos. I'll also put a link down below so you can go and see the photos in full and a bit more information on the gear that I'm using. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching.